the NFL on EA Sports. And coming up, it'll be no holds barred between AFC South rivals. It's the Tennessee Titans and the Houston Texans. And it comes your way next on Madden Football. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Today, it's an intra-division matchup in the AFC South, as it'll be the Tennessee Titans taking on the Houston Texans. Brandon Gordon joined, as always, by Charles Davis. Uh, CD, it's been a tough few years here in Houston. Four, four, and three. Those are their win totals the last three seasons. But in is D'Amico Ryans as head coach. What do you think he brings to the table? And it's interesting you brought up the number three because D'Amico Ryans is the third head coach in three seasons for this team. What he brings to the table, toughness, organization, and hope. He wanted to be the head coach of the Houston Texans, the team he played for. Meanwhile, the Titans last year, they were one of those strange statistical anomalies, CD. When you look at their defense, they were the best in football, number one overall against the run, but worst in the league, number 32 against the pass. And part of the reason they were number one against the run, the struggles they had slowing people down through the air. So people threw it and threw it and threw it and had great success. And a team that should have been in the playoffs last year somehow managed to miss it. We are underway from NRG Stadium in Houston. This taken in right around the goal line. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. So the Titans set to go to work for the first time. Now leading him out, a motivated rookie out of Kentucky fell to the early portion of the second round of the draft since Will Levis. For every rookie prospect, there are always nerves involved in this moment, running your team out to start a game. But there's a reason they brought him in. We're willing to make him their starter today. They believe he can overcome those nerves and lead his team to a victory. We saw him do it at the collegiate level and really make himself into a leader and someone you can envision doing the exact same thing here in the NFL. The NFL's second leading rusher in 2022. Here's Derrick Henry. And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. Here's second and seven. Again, it's Henry. Takes it to the 26, just a one-yard gain. This defense looking for an early stop. This is third down and six. Levis. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he is out of bounds right around the 34. That's a first down pickup for Tennessee on a gain of 10. I'm not sure that that was necessarily a safety valve or a check down throw on third down. Sometimes just try and find the open guy and get him the ball. He did exactly that and found a way to pick up a first down. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Levis sets up to throw here. He's got Derrick Henry again, back-to-back -back catches. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. Give him back-to-back -back catches now. That one for 16 and another first down. Well, we know he can run the football too, but he's a good pass catcher. That's been on display here, Charles, on this opening drive. And we certainly have seen the benefits of what he did in the offseason, which was spend more time with wide receivers, working on routes, working on cuts, in order to make himself a more complete running back and even more of a threat downfield. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Chance is good. He's going to be a very busy guy. Two catches already in this opening drive, and they were looking his way for a third. I think they put this defense on notice that that could be a really, really frequent combination. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. A shotgun handoff to Henry. And he was able to shed one tackle, but could not get away from there. 
They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a force of nature at the defensive tackle position. Yes, he's as big as they come, but still plenty agile. He's able to make a nice play there to swallow up the ball carrier. Levis on third down. Back to the right sideline, and it falls incomplete. As my dad used to tell me all the time when you go ready to play a big-time game, especially when you have one going into a dome setting, better strap it up tight because that crowd can really affect things. Especially on third downs like the one we just saw there with the incompletion. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. So here are the Texans now with a fresh face at quarterback, the second overall pick from Ohio State, C.J. Stroud. Tell you what, partner, he might just be a rookie, but he certainly looks the part of a veteran NFL starter, and he carries himself like one leading the offense out there. In a lot of ways, he is advanced as a first-year quarterback, and he came in and was right at home with this offense. And they'll go play action here with Stroud. That's the veteran. It's Robert Woods. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards picking up the first. Well, certainly as a fan, you get a little bit nervous when you see him make those kind of throws. But they work on that in practice more than we know. And most of them now know their limits and know what they can get away with. And there's a completion right there. Now here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. A gain of eight there on the play. And they'll be left with second and a couple. And Stroud now to throw. That open, that's complete to Dalton Schultz. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. Give the rookie another one on this opening drive and a first down with it. A nice start, Charles, for the first-year passer. He's come out, made a few plays, nice plays to begin this contest. He certainly has, and if he finishes off this drive with a touchdown pass, I bet we don't call him rookie anymore. We'll move him right to veteran and continue from there. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid gain. A man coming off a great rookie year, it's Damian Pierce. And maybe a little over-pursuit there as he's able to take this down to the 25-yard line. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. That's a very nice game there, a confidence-building run. Love the execution up front, and the way he pressed the hole, absolutely perfect. Stroud off the play fake. Short throw into the hands of Jordan. So give him the yardage on the completion and also tack on 15 more. If you get that hand up there, you've got to let go immediately or just not close the hand at all. He didn't, gave it a tug, and that was easy for the officials to see. They'll toss this to Pierce on the right side. And they go the wrong way on this one. Losing yardage back at the 12. Not just a cover guy, Roger McCreary getting back behind the line of scrimmage on that play. Well, coaches stress their defense being physical. They don't just mean the big guys. How about the guys on the outside, the cornerbacks? It's not just their job to patrol the airspace. They can get involved in the run game as well. On second down, here's Pierce. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here 
not even a thought, yeah, is it? Yeah, defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. He's going to be sacked back at the 23-yard line. That's sacked by the DN, Danico Autry. Boy, this has been a nice first drive for them, but right there, Charles, a sack on third and goal, that's tough. Yeah, and if you're the head coach and the offensive play caller, if you had any thoughts about going for it on fourth down, it's a much more difficult decision now. Likely kick the field goal, but if you're going to go for it, you better have the perfect play call on your sheet. So on fourth down, Texan kicker Kaimi Fairbairn comes on. This is a 40-yard attempt from the left hash. Fairbairn able to put this one through. And it's now 3-0, Texans. So a pretty good opening drive that'll make the home fans somewhat happy. They won in six, but they got three in the early lead. And they should be happy. The guys look good getting down the field. That's got to give them a little bit of hope that good things are in store here today for them. the main field goal he'll send this one away and here comes a return from just beyond the goal line and he's able to get this across the 20 but not by much as he's marked down officially at the 21 the Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive over on the sideline hoping to hit that reset button between possessions last time out they had to punt it away this time hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Ball on the 30 now. Here's second and a couple. Play action now. Levis. Oh, that'll be incomplete. Well, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up the third down. We'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one. Force the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Freeze up your guys elsewhere. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. I'll bet there's just a big sigh of relief now, having finally gotten a first down running the football. They've struggled all game long. The defense has had their number. This may help their confidence moving forward. They keep it with Henry on first down. Takes it to about the 37. I think if we put together a job description for a middle linebacker, we would start with being able to hold down things in the middle of the line of scrimmage and be able to take on blockers. But how about the guys who can go sideline to sideline and make plays? Love a guy that can do that. We saw a perfect example of it right there. Here's a second and eight. Back to throw. It's Levis. Gets this to the former Texan, DeAndre Hopkins. His first catch, good for eight and a first down. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four. They'll run it again with Henry. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. That one, a first-down pickup of eight. 
And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. This defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. On first down, Levis got his man, Akakwo. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. Here's Levis. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Levis looking to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have a Titans first down by about a yard as they find a way to convert there on third down and five. This offense is starting to get into rhythm. A nice quick throw there on target, able to pick up another first down. So first and 10 now from the 30. Off the play fake, Levis. Across the formation, Burks has it. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. 23 yards, the final tally. Kind of a dangerous throw there. He's off balance when he gets rid of it. But this is all about a quarterback knowing what he can get away with. And that time, it turns into a completion and a healthy gain as well. They'll try and run for it with Henry. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and goal. If you're going to keep these guys out of the end zone, you've got to be able to commit to stopping the run. And that's a nice job there, getting the safeties involved in run support. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Levis from the gun. From the back corner of the end zone, but he could not get the feet down. This will wind up incomplete. This has been a long drive. You got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Levis to throw it. and it's incomplete. We're following the play here, now we've got an injury. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. Here's Nick Folk now on for the field goal. This is an easy one, 23 yarder. Folk's kick is good, and that will tie us at 3 3. So a good kick there to polish off the drive with three points. Yeah, coaches always talk about finishing a drive with a kick. Two of them give you points, either an extra point or, in this case, a field goal. Field goals, all we've had so far. 3-3 now as the kick is away. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> 
Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive in with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. We talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. 3-3, a tight one after one on EA Sports. Ready for the second quarter from Houston. It's the Texans in possession of the football as they've got it with a third down in less than a yard. Stroud. from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. He'll get this into the hands of Nico Collins. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. Seems as if the passing attack starting to heat up a little bit here in the second quarter. You can sense and you can see the momentum because now they're reading their patterns downfield. They're understanding the coverages and they're finding the open holes in the defense. Here goes Stroud again. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. Now Stroud. He'll complete this one to Collins. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. The pickup goes for 13 and sets him up first and goal. They run here with Singletary. Oh, good move. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second in goal. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Pierce now up the middle. on their first two possessions. Remember, the first wound up in a field goal, but we all know field goals aren't going to cut it in the NFL, so they're not going to be denied here, and they wind up punching this one into the end zone. Fairbairn good with the extra point, and the lead is now 10-3. to So that one, an eight-play drive, it spans 75 yards. And it was Damian Pierce closing things out with a touchdown run. Kick it away. 
From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. Holding, receiving team. So holding will scratch off some of that return. And I know fans get frustrated when they see penalties of this sort on kick returns, but it is difficult to do it right against these moving targets at full speed. Hard to do. So the hold on special teams backs them up all the way inside the 15 to start. Tenth carry now for Derrick Henry. Defensively, Jimmy Ward in on the stop. Second and five. Now Levis on the slant. Burks, second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Levis to throw off play action. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Well, that one's all about the defender making life difficult for the receiver. Very tough for a guy to hold on to the football through all that contact. He ends up forcing the incompletion. Now a second and ten. Levis. yet they didn't enter the league with a massive chip on his shoulder if he wasn't a first round pick they want to show the league that they made a big mistake determined to get the first down there no hesitation at all to tuck it and go i bet he would have tried running through their entire defense if it meant reaching that marker now levis and the catch made by hopkins will be a gain of five and that'll make it second down Levis sets up to throw here. Over the middle, he has a Conquo. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Back to the ground now, it's Henry. He's got it to the 43 here. From the 43, here's a second and eight. Working from the gun, here's Levis. This one downfield to Burks. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 22-yard line. Second down. Yeah. 
from the 20. Here's a second and eight. Off the option, here's Henry. Another two-yard gain there, but they'll need to do better this time. It's third and six. Two yards on the first down carry, and then followed up by two yards on the second down carry. Well, that's definitely not going to be enough to get the job done. Wasn't the expression three yards in the cloud of dust? <laughs> now they're going to need six on third down to keep the drive going. Levis on third down. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And the Titans are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. He's down to the two-yard line. 54 yards rushing for him now in the ballgame. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. After all the preparation, all the practice, a play like that will absolutely break your heart. They had everything they wanted, just unable to complete it. In the end zone, a big time drop. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And he will take this one in for a Titans touchdown. Will Levis scoring on the two-yard keeper. And the Titans are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. And maybe the defense caught a little by surprise there that he took off and got in? Yeah, I would think so, because if you're analyzing it from that side of the ball, you're thinking running back, fullback, <laughs> it takes you a while before you get to the quarterback. Extra point up and good by Folk. And we are even at 10 apiece. now at 10 apiece as the kicks away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. And now out comes Houston. And they'll be looking to build off of a nice drive last time. A drive that really relied on the quarterback. Making good decisions, distributing the ball well, distributing it accurately, keeping it away from danger. A really nicely run drive. But now the defense, what adjustments do they need to make in the passing game? Pass rush, pass rush, pass <laughs> rush. Whether it's the simple, guys huh? up front, or maybe you bring additional guys, but you've got to disrupt the timing of them throwing the ball. Right, we'll see if they can disrupt it here. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it'll be second down. to throw. Here's Stroud. That's complete. It's Collins. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. Pierce takes it straight ahead. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Nice run defense presented there, and what I mean by that is discipline. Guys filling the right gaps in the right holes, no one over pursuing, and making a very nice play. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. 
And Pierce gets it again on second down. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. Third and three. Stroud to throw it. Got him in. It's Brown. And he is going to have a Texans first down. It won't be by much. He needed three, and he got three, barely. But the mark shows first down. That's a big conversion there on third down because they did not want to give the ball up here late in the half. They'd love to take the clock all the way down and score. This will definitely help the cause. Stroud to the air on first and ten. And his throw is incomplete. They're putting together a drive here in the final minutes of the half, but the coverage has been tight all game long, and they certainly want to keep them off the scoreboard here. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. Stroud looking to throw. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. As a corner, you have to be able to run with guys step for step downfield of man coverage and make up ground quickly in zone. You have to put yourself in position to make plays just like that one we saw there. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. The throwing again is Stroud. And the Titan defense steps up here, and down he goes. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. On fourth down, out is the punter Cameron Johnston to boot it away. for the fair catch makes the fair catch just inside the 15 yard line so possession goes over here on the punt and the titans will be backed up deep to begin the drive as they take over first and 10. First and ten, here's Levis. To the sideline and incomplete. He was looking for the running back, Derrick Henry. That'll bring up second down. Here's Levis. Going to the right here and finding Burks. And he'll be out of bounds at the 25-yard line. That's a first down pickup for Tennessee on a gain of 10. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. Levis now on first and 10. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The benefit, you got it. The benefits of practice. Now, I believe they buzzed down. They're going to take another look at this play with all reviews coming from the replay official here in the final two minutes of the half. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I, I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's, that's pretty tight. Now well, here's the call. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. Again, it's Levis looking to throw it. Looking for Hopkins, and he's got him on the crossing route. 
And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans 42. The catch and run, good for 24 yards. That crossing route is so effective when you hit it just right because you get a guy on the move, and then we see the end result there. It's a nightmare for the defense. They got a guy with a full head of steam. Not only does he catch it, but he picks up additional yardage after it. Levis's throw pulled in by Hopkins. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Levis looking to throw. And brought in downfield by Burks. Touchdown, Titans. Traylon Burks, 31 yards. And the Titans will take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. And that touchdown gives them a touchdown lead before they attempt the extra point. What a great way to end the half. Yeah, great job to put themselves in front. And now, see on the sideline, special teams defense scrambling, saying we want to preserve this for the final moments of this second quarter. On for the extra point is Folk. He's got it as they go up by a total of 17 to 10. So the drive there took six plays. And it was Traylon Burks capping things off with a touchdown catch. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. And the Texans going to get the football one final time here in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. And just 25 seconds to go in the half now as they've got it first and 10. Throwing now is Stroud. Pressure comes, and the Titans able to bring him down. They called the corner blitz, and Roger McCreary, he got in there and earned the sack. So we reach halftime here with the visiting Titans taking the lead in the intermission. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. We were certainly treated to an entertaining first half. Both these teams with some high points and maybe a couple of low points as well. So it's gonna be a question of who can be the most disciplined team going forward. Okay, coach, yeah, adjustments likely gonna play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. Touchdown is the difference, 17-10 our score, and we are back underway on EA Sports. Desmond King now to return it. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. So here's the Texans offense now. They get set to start this third quarter. But well, Charles, we saw a pretty entertaining first half, close ball game. Remember there toward the end of the second quarter, the opposition scored to take the lead. Now we'll see if these guys 
can get a score of their own to regain that lead. Yeah, they want to have that type of a response, don't they? Because they want to find a way to take control of this ball game one more time. Gauntlet's been thrown down. They want to see if they're ready to answer it. A run by Pierce begins the second half. And he'll be brought down here at the 28. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Another carry for Pierce. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. Pierce will try to pick it up. Taking it right down Broadway. He may go. Touchdown, Houston. Damian Pierce with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Texans are an extra point away from evening this one up. And here on third down, your number one goal, don't be a hero, just get the first down. But here, once he gets past the line of scrimmage, the field opens up for him, and he's able to take it right up the gut and into the end zone. On for the PAT, Kaimi Fairbear. And he gets it to go, and we're all even, 17 apiece. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it was Damian Pierce closing things out with a touchdown run. turn this one so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback trailing Burks headed back out with the rest of this offense previous series definitely a focal point three catches the touchdown grab as a DB your former DB is there a number of catches on a drive you're like oh he got the best of us I'm not sure there's a number but there's a great feel and what he did on the last drive, yeah. <laughs> Especially with a touchdown. Yes. You're never you're, happy. You're exactly right. The way he capped it off. So you feel that at the sideline, and now you're looking at your buddies and saying, okay, what are we going to do to take things away from him? Because I'm not sure the other guys can make those sort of players. So let's make sure that we don't let him get going again. Holding offense. So that time they got the left guard with a hold. And let's face it, in today's ball, you might have that 330-pound guy you're supposed to clear out of there. You might need a little bit of extra help by grabbing the jersey and trying to ride him out. Inside handoff, Henry shoves him aside. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. All runners count on their eyes to find the gaps and creases to find open space. There was absolutely none on that one. Totally swallowed up on that play. Levis to throw it. It's complete, Burks. Third and seven. Back to throw, it's Levis. Going deep for Hopkins. And this is dropped. Oh, it's incomplete. He had a big gainer in his sights, but he could not reel it in. 
that is not what you expect from a receiver of his caliber. Sometimes you get a little ahead of yourself. You don't hook it in, and all of a sudden it's on the ground. A surprise to all. On now is the Titans punter, as he'll punt it away for the second time. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. Here's King. Call it an even 40-yard punt, 7-0 on the return. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. And the football going back over now to the Houston Texans. And this drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Danico Autry able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. That's his second sack of the game. The best defensive ends, they do their homework as much as offensive guys do. They know how to beat the offensive lineman across from them, what moves they need to do to set them up. This guy's been pretty good at it all game long. That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22 yards to go. A give up the middle to Singletary. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. I was pretty surprised there when they lined up to run it on second and long, but it worked out for him. It certainly did, and that requires some confidence, some fortitude, and a little bit of hope, doesn't it? You hope you catch the defense just right and break off a big run to help yourself out on the next down. Stroud on third down now. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. That one goes for 24 yards. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it understands the catch radius, understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball, and puts it right out there for the nice pickup. On first down, here's Stroud. This is caught, it's Brown. And they'll get this one to about the 20 yard line. Add the gain here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. Now that was a fun one to watch right there, a nice in-breaking route, and plenty of room in the middle of the field and he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. First and 10, it's Pierce. And he'll be taken down at the 20 after a gain of just one. Second and nine. Toss left side for Pierce. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. They wind up losing a couple there, so they go behind the original line of scrimmage, and now third and 11 coming up. And they have just not been able to block him at all throughout this game. Seems like every other play, he's doing something in the backfield. Already got two sacks, and now here's a tackle behind the line. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. The sack by Harold Landry, the former Boston College Eagle. And this dominant defensive performance continued on that play. This poor quarterback has now received the protection he needs and has had to pick himself up off the turf far too often. Kaimi Fairbear now to attempt the Texan field goal. He was true on his first, this a tough one, from 49 yards away. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And with that, they take the lead here, 20 to 17. Well, maybe a little bit of an anxious moment there as that ball got closer and closer, but it does curl in. Yeah, actually did a little bit of a slow dance there with the left upright, didn't it? But had just enough space, as you said, for it to curl in. Fairbairn 
now. Following the main field goal, he'll send this one away. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Tennessee's offense back to work again. We'll see Traylon Burks. Good day for him so far here in the third quarter. He's hit pay dirt once over 100 yards, but hey, it's the third quarter. He's thinking, I want more, right? He wants more, and it just increases the confidence of his team because every play he makes, that means his quarterback is really feeling good about throwing the football. Probably feels like he can't throw an incomplete pass when he throws it to him right now. Yeah, he's looked really, really sharp. They begin with Henry. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Brought down on the play by the linebacker, Christian Harris. Here's second and ten. Levis sets up to throw here. Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. That was Will Anderson getting home and finishing the play. The lessons will continue of this rookie. He's got to learn how to read situations just a little bit better. That far behind the line, he's got to find a way to get rid of the football and not take the sack, whether it's with his legs or just throwing it away. Here is third and quite a ways. Levis. Able to find the open man. That's complete. It's a big play there for Tennessee. 42 yards. Despite writing it down on my notes, I never give enough credit to the offensive line, and we have to here. The protection, that's what made this play a success. Quarterback had to wait for his crossing route to develop, and that takes a little bit of extra time. Excellent job by the big fellas up front. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Henry will get it. He's been busy today. Down to the 41. From the 41, here's second down and eight. Again, it's Henry. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. They give those two yards right back, and now they're looking at a third and ten. With his size, it often takes more than one guy to get him down, but if you can at least slow him up and the reinforcements arrive, you have a chance to get him on the ground, and that they did that time for a loss. Levis back to throw. Now a diving effort right sideline. He's got it. He got 29 yards that time. I know that rookie quarterbacks have to earn veteran receivers' trust. Maybe we saw that on that play with that type of effort, huh? Yeah, helping out the rook with a heck of a catch. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Now a handoff to Henry. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Now Levis. Now throw on the run, but that's going to be incomplete. Play number nine on the drive coming up, and they need nine yards on third down. A 20th carry now for Derrick Henry. And yeah, the ball is knocked out, and the Texans scoop it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And 
just as they thought they might be able to take that across and get the lead. A big red zone turnover. I know that I am defense-centric, and I want to give them a whole lot of credit, but I just can't believe after that drive, in that position, ball security paramount, they turned the ball over. Terrible. Damian Pierce taking the field with the rest of the Texans offense. He's looking sharp here so far in the third quarter, Charles. It appears that the halftime gave him a little bounce. You know, came out, spring in his legs, a little pep in his step. And he's taken off and running really well in the third quarter. Sometimes we talk about how guys don't want halftime to come, but some guys, they're happy when that break gets there. You never know which way it's going to go. He's taking advantage of it in this one, though. And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down and that will not be ruled a fumble. Mike Vrabel saw him on the sideline. He didn't even hesitate. They will go for it on fourth. They'll run. It's Henry. And boy, is he close. Did he get there? No, they're going to say he's short of the line to gain. They'll get neither the touchdown nor the first down. And this 10-play drive winds up yielding nothing. And you wonder, Charles, could that decision come back to haunt them later? And it really could, because in this situation, you kick the field goal in a tight game like this, that's a good play. Yeah. But maybe what he's saying to himself is, I'm just not a big proponent of the old idea that any possession that ends in a kick, I'm happy with. He wanted to be really aggressive. A little twist here in the third quarter. They'll bring the tight end in motion right. They'll start on the ground with Pierce. And yeah, this is going to double their room to maneuver, able to get it from the 5 to the 10-yard line. Not a ton of room available on that one, but he made use of what space was available and gained decent yardage. Now second and 5. They go again with Pierce. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. A fresh set of downs on a gain of 13 there for the Texans. Defensively, they were in the 3-4. Solid run up the middle. What made it successful? Well, what you have to do is control the nose guard, but sometimes you don't do it by blocking him. You do it by influencing him. Get him moving to one side or the other and hit him back on the opposite. Now here's Stroud. That'll be pulled in downfield by Collins. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A really good pickup of 28 yards. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Houston. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. Second and 10. Now a handoff for Pierce. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. Shotgun snap to Stroud. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's 
made at the Titans' 29-yard line. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. Toss play. Here's Pierce. They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. Excellent job on the tackle for loss by Harold Landry shooting into the backfield. One of the toughest things for an offensive lineman to learn is the ability to get in space and hit people who are moving targets. And linebackers are not easy ones to hit because they know how to move, juke, and make you miss. And that's exactly what he did on that play. A nice play for the defense. And room there to work it inside the 25. It's a seven yard pickup. They'll be looking now to third and six. Talk about controlling the football and controlling the drive. And with runs like that, they'll continue to do exactly that. The Texans on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. This will be third and six. And they'll go play action here with Stroud. And that is incomplete, but a penalty flag coming in. This could be a first down. So now then, the penalty's got him set up with a first and goal. And Stroud now to throw. And that is caught. Touchdown, Texans. Nico Collins with an amazing diving catch. And the Texans go nearly the length of the field and finish it off with six points. They have to love seeing that from their young quarterback here in the fourth quarter, able to further that lead with a touchdown pass. He didn't go turtle, did he? And you know what I mean by that. I had an old coach used to say all the time, hey, when we have a lead late, don't just tuck in and try and ride it out. Go out and play and extend the lead. And that's what he did. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. Touchdown, here's Fairbair now to kick it away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Titans now just about ready to take over. And the script really is flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit. First down, Levis. It's complete to Hopkins. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Two yards to go, second down. A shotgun handoff to Henry. Treads him with a stiff arm. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 74 yards rushing now as he's done it on 22 carries. Now that's how you start to get back in the good graces of your head coach. Remember, he fumbled on the last possession. How about the faith they showed him? Giving him the ball again, and he repaid him, picking up a first down. They keep it with Henry on first down. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought second and right at a yard. Second down and a yard. They'll run it 
it again with Henry. Powerful running. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Seven yards there at a first down. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds incomplete. Give it big credit for his coverage right there because when he saw the route break deep, he stayed in position to prevent a completion while avoiding any risk of a flag. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Here's Levis. A short throw taken in by Conquo. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. They'll drop to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Now, that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy is nimble and quick. More than a space eater, he just made a great play there. Henry again on second down. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. short of the first at about the 21. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. So here's Nick Folk in an important spot. He hit his first. This one from 38. Folks, kick is good, and this is back down to a seven-point game. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. And there's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. This game back within a touchdown now as the kickoff's away. And this taken in at the goal line. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Offense back out there along with Damian Pierce. He's already hit Pater twice. He's up over 100 yards. He is feeling good. And he's just zipping along today. Everything coming together for him. It's that type of a day that you see a back just got to have a grin on his face every time his number is called because he doesn't feel like there's going to be any lost yardage plays. Nothing but big-time positive runs. Making the sideline grin as well. Stroud sets up the play action. As his complete to Woods. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Second and a couple. It's 
Stroud looking to throw. A quick throw there is incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they're going to have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. Going for it with Pierce. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Well, sometimes, Brandon, it's just not a secret to how things get done. He's been running well all game long, and they continue to rely on him in this key situation. They told us they were going to rely on him. They have. He comes through there, a big third down conversion. Stroud's throw pulled in by Woods, and that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. Pierce takes it straight ahead and he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Trailing in the fourth this close of a game, that's a penalty you just can't afford. It's an absolute killer and it's one that drives coaches and teammates insane. Now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Here's Stroud. Another targeting catch for Robert Woods. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. Back to the ground with Pierce. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Now the objective there, I mean, yes, the positive gain, that's nice, but work some clock. Yeah, you're exactly right, but the problem for them is still within a possession, so they can't just sit on it running the ball. They'll have to find a way to throw it effectively as well. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Stroud. And he's got it. And he's brought down after a very nice game. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. This is something you got to be wary of defensively. I mean, just because they're in the mode of trying to burn some clock doesn't mean they won't pass it. They got good yardage out of that one. Yeah, and really, when you're looking at it, now they've got a fresh set of downs. Look for second down. If they want to take another shot and try and loosen things up, that'd be the time to do it. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. Pierce. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. An ideal down and distance to try to finish this thing off. Second and inches. Once more, it's Pierce. And this time, he is in. Yes. A touchdown run there from a yard out. And the Texans have opened up a two-touchdown lead here in this fourth quarter. And that right there is the definition of a statement drive. Here in the fourth quarter, trying to get to the finish line. And here, they were able to hold the ball for a long time and move it down the field. And how about them finishing it off with the touchdown run? Winning football 101, check that box. Fairbairn good with the extra point. And the lead now up to 14. That time, a nine-play drive. And it was Damian Pierce closing things out with a touchdown run. So after 
for the touchdown. Here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. So Levis and the Titans now down by two touchdowns. A minute 51 on the clock. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Levis, he'll look to throw it. Throw left side complete. That's Phillips. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. As soon as he leaked out and began his route, someone on the defensive side broke with him and arrived just in time to separate him from another reception. They'll try again here, second and ten. Here's Levis. A throw out wide going to be incomplete. Back-to-back -back incompletions, but we know this is definitely four-down territory. Time not on their side. I don't think they want to try and get the first down in two installments. I think they got to go and get it right here, right now. Well, this crowd is making an impact right now. Third and ten. Levis. That'll be complete to a Okonkwo. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 44-yard line. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. And he's going to be sacked. They sack him back right at the midfield strike. Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds left to play. They'll come up now. This is second and long. Levis to throw. A shot downfield for Burks. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. And while it's probably going to take a miracle at this stage, if they come down with this one in the end zone, they've still got a fighting chance. That one, however, winds up incomplete. This crowd turning up the decibel level. It's third and long. Forced out to his left. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. Nice call on defense, rolling out the nickel package for that big third down play. And he did an excellent job locking down coverage and forcing him to try and run for it. And he doesn't get there, which brings up a big fourth down call. The decision made for him. They've got to go. It's fourth down. That is caught. And a timeout coming in. This will be their final one with 10 seconds remaining. This is first and 10. Levis sets up to throw here. Throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. A lot of practice time, a lot of thinking goes into two-minute drills, even on the defensive side. So now you want to make sure the guys understand. Continue to be aggressive, but make sure you're smart in doing so. Here's second down. One final try here for Will Levis. One last shot at the end zone. 
And that is going to officially draw the curtain on this one as the last throw intercepted. Derek Stingley picks it. Well, somebody lit a fire under that offense during the break, Charles. Remember, they trailed an intermission. They come out, they have the big second half, and that lifts them to the victory. And Brandon, trailing at halftime, we always talk about teams making adjustments. You know what the best adjustments usually are? It's just executing better. Because the game plan you put in place at the beginning of the week often still holds. You don't have to make wholesale changes. You just have to do it a little bit better, a little cleaner. And they did that in the second half, and that led them to victory. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Texans as we say so long from Houston.